What's up y'all, it's Tommy here with Everyday Finance and in this video I'm going to talk about how you can actually go about creating an LLC. So if you're someone who's been thinking about starting a business or maybe you are already making sales, right? You have kind of a side hustle going and you're just curious about incorporating, then this is the video for you. Now I went ahead and took a few notes just kind of looking at the process and kind of what I went through when I incorporated. So me, I actually incorporated pretty much by myself. I, I've done it a few times for different corporations that I've had. You know, I didn't really realize that there was free ways to do it nowadays. So I kind of want to walk through the process of what to expect. Towards the end, I'll touch on a few different ways to be able to get professionals to do it for little to no cost. Typically, the reason why I even bring up incorporations is because of things that I will talk on uh, later on on my channel in the future. But the real big thing is protection, right? You want to make sure that you are protected just because if anything happens to you or to somebody else during the course of business, right? It's something that could fall back on you and could be financially catastrophic to you, right? And so you just want to make sure that you're protected in the LLC. I'm not saying that the LLC is a complete cover of it or you will be completely protected with an LLC, but it's a good first layer of protection. And even besides that, like I always mention on this channel, I think it's big to have things like business credit. You know, you're going to see all the larger uh, corporations, Fortune, Fortune 500 companies that are using it, right? And so, you know, you want to start trying to build that business credit because that's something that can help you're going to be able to leverage once you have a consistent business coming right and if you don't have some sort of business structure or business entity that you're using then it makes it a lot difficult to be able to access business credit okay on top of that even dealing with certain business partners or uh, business vendors right so whether you got to you know exchange money for certain goods right to for you to be able to manufacture products whatever it is typically those companies are going to want to see that you are an actual business right they don't want to see that they're just giving selling product or giving out product to someone that just has a name so now let's jump into it the first thing is going to be your business name right you're more than likely going to want to check your secretary of state and you can do typically they'll have a section where you're able to search that actual business name to make sure it's available that's the first thing that you're going to want to do you're going to want to make sure that whatever name that you want to have is actually available in the system now I do want to also touch on that with one other point that you don't necessarily have to use the name of your LLC as the name of your actual business name, right? The name that you tell people like, this is the name of my business, right? Because typically you can also have a DBA, which is called doing business as. So you might have a certain name for the LLC. So my LLC might be Tommy LLC, but then my DBA or doing business as name is everyday finance, right? So you can do that, but you do nonetheless want to make sure that the business name that you want is available. Next, you're going to want a registered agent. This is someone who kind of is able to accept mail on behalf of yourself. And this is going to be something that's going to be available online. Everyone online is going to be able to see it. That way, if uh, typically the kind of mail they're going to get is really, you know, it's going to be more legal paperwork, right? It's like if someone wants to issue a lawsuit to you or someone wants to send you a cease and desist or whatever it is, they're going to send it to your registered agent. Typically, that's a lawyer, right? You know, you can, there's plenty of lawyers out there that will let you, um, I mean, it's kind of like a, it's really a thing, right? It's not like you're at, you have it sent to your actual lawyer, though I'm sure bigger companies do that, but it's literally a company, a lawyer that has a bunch of people list him as the registered agent and he collects the mail and then delivers it to you. Okay. So you want to make sure that you have a uh, registered agent. Okay. This is going to be big, especially in situations where you're getting sued, but also just to kind of protect your information, right? Another big thing is going to be a business address. Okay. Now these points I'm mentioning are things that you kind of want to have already be thinking of because you know, these are kind of mistakes that I've made in the past as well. And it's a lot easier if you start off on the right track than you trying to backtrack and get these things fixed, right? Your business address, you kind of want to start with, you can start with a home address or you can also sign up for a virtual address, okay? Now, I've shot a whole video on some of the top virtual addresses that I recommend. I'll link to it down in the description below that you can go ahead and take a look at and see which one of those best fits your needs. But I typically recommend you go the virtual uh, business address route. I actually went the route of using a actual home, right? A regular home address. And now I'm, I'm looking to be able to move all my information over to an actual uh, virtual address or, you know, because nowadays most people are working, you can work virtually, right? You don't need to have an office that you go into. Now I do have office space that I use, but I can't technically use that office space as an address just because of the way it's set up. 
right? So I typically recommend you get a virtual office or business address, which you can start either having all your mail directed to, but at least listing it on, you know, for example, let's say you have a website or, you know, for whatever types of regulations that you have, you want to list a certain address, you can do that as well. Next, you're also going to want to have a list of all the members that are going to be put on the LLC. Now, the reason why I touch on that is because, especially if you're having more than one owner, members really just means owner. They're called members for an LLC. But if you're going to have more than one owner, not only do you want to have a list of all the owners, but you also want to have some sort of operating agreement set up, right? This is especially important when you have more than one person. And you know, that is key because it kind of breaks down what should happen should you run into any type of issues with your other partners or the other owners, right? Let's say one of you guys is going through a divorce or something, or one person, one of the members passes away. What exactly happens next? Is it that all the other owners can buy him out? Or is it a situation where it's passed down with his inheritance, right? Passed down to whoever is uh, set up to inherit all his assets and everything. Because that could be a situation where now you have someone new coming into the company who, you know, maybe they have a controlling interest or they now own a big portion of your business or equal portion of your business. And now they're going to be one of the key stakeholders, right? Those are the kind of things that you want to keep in the back of your mind whenever you're going through all these things. Now, once you have all these components, you can now head over to your secretary of state website. It kind of depends based off of what, how your website's set up but they'll typically have a place where you're able to file online. And to be quite honest with you, at least I know in Texas, you know, the first time doing it, it just seems so complicated and convoluted in terms of how to actually get that done. But there's typically, you're gonna be able to find tutorials and everything online. Now, I'm not gonna deep dive into any specific states, but you can easily just be able to Google search whatever state you're in. And, you know, there, I'm sure there's gonna be instructions on how to go about setting up an LLC for that specific state. Now, in terms of actually an easy way to set up an LLC, now, we have partnered with a few different incorporation companies and I'll link to them down below. That will actually help you incorporate for free. Now, the way they're able to do it for free is basically they kind of look at it as like, it's kind of in business called a, called a loss leader where they're not gonna make money on you incorporating, but they're hoping that you buy other services that they offer. Some of these companies, they might give you a free like a registered agent, right? Kind of what I mentioned previously, they might give that to you for free for a year and then eventually after the year, you'll pay, you know, I don't know, $50 a year or whatever it is, whatever their fee might be. And then they'll try to offer you other services, right? Whether it's business insurance, business loans, anything. And so you can actually use these companies to set up your business, right? To get your LLC set up. I mean, if they have other services that you think are beneficial for you, you can sign up for those. And if not, then you can just keep it pushing, right? And so go ahead, I'll link to those guys down below and you can actually be able to uh, get signed up with those guys. Now, one caveat I will mention is their services are free, but depending on where you're filing, you're typically gonna have to pay some sort of a state filing fee. They will still charge you that. They're not gonna cover the state filing fee for you, right? I mean, it could be a, it could be a couple hundred dollars. I'm, some states, I think it's even higher than a thousand. But uh, for example, in Texas, it's about between two to four hundred dollars, okay? So just keep that in mind that you will still pay your state filing fees. They'll just, you know, pretty much make it a lot easier of a process for you to be able to go through all these things. And then they'll do the filing for you to make sure everything's filed in accordance. Now, just some bonus information as well on top of that is you want to look into getting an EIN number as well. Okay. Now, an EIN number is going to be, it's pretty much, you can kind of look at it like a social a social security number, but for your business. I think that's probably the easiest way to look at it, but this is gonna be critical for you to be able to open things like business bank accounts. Whenever you start applying for uh, loans eventually down the road, you know, building business credits, things like that, that all you want done under your EIN number, okay? Which is your employer identification number. Also, when you start hiring, you're gonna need that number as well. So it's just something that you wanna get done as fast as possible. As soon as you get the, the business created, I'd recommend you just go ahead and get the EIN number as well. And I've actually shot a video, I'll link to it down below, where it kind of breaks down how you go about setting up that number as well, okay? That process is really easy. I recommend you just go through, I think it's like through the IRS website. I'll link to it down below, all the information that you need for it, but it's a really simple process for you to actually be able to set that up. And guys, that's pretty much the gist of this video, guys. I just wanted to quickly go over how to set up an LLC, trying to make a video as short as possible for you to be able to just get an idea of what documents you need to uh, gather together 
and how you can go about actually going through that process, right? Again, I recommend you check out one of the companies I'm gonna link below that we're partnering with. They'll more than likely be the easiest route for you to be able to get it done, but you can more than likely also be able to just Google search and find other companies if you prefer not to go through us, okay? Now, if you do go through us, they typically will give us some sort of referral fee depending on the company. Some of the companies won't. Some of them we have actually have a partnership where they're willing to give us referral fees. That helps us pay for you know the production, the channel, and everything like that. But you're more than likely also able to Google search and find other companies that'll do the same thing. Anyways, that's pretty much the gist of it for this video, guys. Be sure you hit the like button down below so we know we're on the right track. And also make sure you hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss any of our future videos. Alrighty, so that's gonna be it, guys. I'll see you at the next one. Peace.